Good afternoon. This is Lady Charlotte coming to you from beautiful Beauty, Texas. And today I'm going to go over some things that are necessary in the uh, studio, but not necessarily fun. They're pretty much hard work. And that is the maintaining of your kiln shells. Kiln shells are very important for <laughs> what we do. This kiln shell has been sanded, grinded down pretty good. Uh, it could use a little more, so I'm going to take this uh, number 60 diamond core. Candy pad and finish it off. I've scraped off most of the kiln work with the uh, putty knife, but there's still a few stubborn bits here that have gotten down into this little crust and crannies that are in the, in the, the, the shelf. And so this is what some bits there are really made out. And there will be places where there will be old kiln shells that is deteriorated and there's places that have indentations in the shelf itself with old kiln work will have filled up. So we have to try and get as much of that old kiln work out as possible. And we've got this kiln work right here to apply over. We will have this part of it done. Just for your reference though, I've been working on this shelf for probably 45 minutes. And I'm just coming to the end of it when I close the camera in. Uh, there's not a whole lot of fun to watching somebody just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So, and no specific thing to show for it. Now what I'm doing is I'm wiping away all the dust that I drew out. <laughs> and as you can see, there's still a couple more spots that could use some more work on it. But for the most part, it's pretty well done. I'm going to do just a little bit more right over here. The reason for getting it so clean, when I put on new tips down here, I don't want it to flake off. And if you have a lot of spaces underneath where you've got the old film work still under there, it will cause the new film work to flake. So that's why we're going to so much trouble with getting this off. If you don't want it to flake. I know it probably doesn't look like I'm making any headway here. But I really am. See there, that one just gets here now. I can only do one shell <laughs> a day. This uh that's still my camera work everywhere. Okay. This kind of elbow grease gets to me after a while. Since I will be doing 
Smells still at 400 degrees. The completed schedule early early. And it's cooling down, but it's still... When I came in here, it was still at 400 degrees. It has to get down to 100 or below before I can take the pieces out. I take the pieces out too soon. It's it hot to bring your fingers. And if it's a blade, the glazing can sometimes crack. And you can hear it. It'll ping, ping, ping. Then you take them out too soon. And the air hits them. And when they do that, when they ping like that, they can ping like that for days. Even weeks sometimes. And we don't want that. So we let our kiln cool off to a room temperature before we remove the pieces from the kiln. Well, I think this diamond core pad here is doing a pretty good job. My little granddaughter came out here the other day. She worked on this shelf and she got it pretty good. I mean, she cleaned it up good. And then she took the cameras off. The only problem is she just wasn't careful enough with the kill work as to how much she put on. She had such good time. She's 10 years old. And she was enjoying herself being out in the studio with Grandma and doing things with her. Kept getting one to after the other on the shelf, and this morning when I came down here to the shelf, it was all the film work was all scratched and because it had a head too heavy an application. If you put too little, it won't do any good. If you put too much, it won't do any good either because it'll all crack off, and you don't want it coming off on your pieces. I think that was it. I'm going to take this one now and put it just get rid of all the little parts of the dust on it. But I should have been wearing a mask. I do apologize. That is a bad safety hazard. I should not be showing you things without wearing the mask. And it's hard for me to talk with the mask on. And that's why when I'm doing a video I probably don't I don't use the mask like I should. Okay. We pretty well got this done. Next step is going to be for us to apply fresh turmeric. Make sure we got all the dust in our towel. Now we have kiln wash right here. Which might be a little thick now, and it, that may have been Harley's problem. Will be a little thick, and 
I didn't know this. Three edges to time if it did work. I'm adding this by really tiny, tiny increments because if I don't, I can overdo it. Okay, that looks about right. So we're going to start going. Once upon a time, I do these things in my wheel. I do just about everything in my wheel. <laughs> when I'm working on things like this, uh, I've got the bright idea. Well, yeah, I just spun the wheel. She only wants to brush out the middle of them. Pull it to the edge and make it a nice little circular pattern. You can do that. It was way too easy to get too much going on. So I'm going to put a little bit extra on here because it's got that in there. So I'm going to just sit here and wait for a few minutes and it will be dry. Three coats is also all you need to put on with kiln wash. Right now we're putting on second coat. Get all the little things around the edge that I might have missed. And now we let that dry all the way to dry. And we put the light third and last coat on. I think what my baby girl did was she uh, didn't let it completely dry in between the coats. And she probably put like four or five coats on because she was just having fun. So. a lesson for her. And maybe a lesson for Grandma. <laughs> After we do this part, I will set you up in a different place to do some glazing. And so we're going to do some glazing. 
and we'll see how that turns out. When I let unload the pieces from the kiln, they will be ready to be glazed. But before I can do any glaze firing, firing glazes, I have to make sure all my kiln shells are up to par. This is the last of the big kiln shells that I have to do. They usually last for two to three firings. And then this kiln wash starts flaking off. And when it starts flaking off, it's better to just take it and go with it and get all the kiln wash off. And then you can start over. It's better to have a kiln wash that is not flaking when you're firing. If you fire on a flaky kiln shell, a lot of times those flakes when the kiln gets to those high, high temperatures, things like the kiln wash, like, and even tiny little, I do miniatures, and I have to be careful of my tiny little pieces. Sometimes I have to put them in something that will hold them there. Because when they get to a certain temperature, the little tiny pieces will raise up and they will be just suspended in the air. And that's the same thing with the, with the kiln wash. It'll raise off the shelf and be suspended in the air. And then as the kiln starts to cool down, it will drop down. And sometimes it will drop down on something that you don't want it on. And then you have the problem of saying, oh, wait, how do I get the kiln wash off of this? Yeah. We don't want that to happen to anybody. So, we make sure that our kiln wash is done properly. This is the third and last coat. everybody that pledged this Kickstarter to feel like they've got their money's worth. And it's not just in the piece, but also in the interaction between the potter and trying to do something here. There we go. Okay. Now, as I said, I want Okay. Kiln wash has been taken care of. Lid dropped. I picked it up. I want you to feel like you have really gotten your money's worth. And that doesn't mean just in the uh, pieces themselves, but in the interaction and how you got those pieces. And what the pieces went through in the how it was made. So when you're sitting there and you've got your piece and you're talking to your friends and they ask you about things, then you can tell them specifically how that piece was made. And that's the thing I want for you. I want you to be have a lot of knowledge about your pieces. And to me, whenever you take one of my pieces, you're taking a part of me. 
and I will be with you every time you use that piece. And I, I think that's, you know, there, there's a connection between the potter and the user. That's why from the top of my, the title for this Kickstarter is From My Hands to Yours. And that's what it means. It means taking it from my hands to your hands. And for me, that's a very intimate, you know, action. And uh, I think it continues to work even after I'm no longer in the picture. You have a piece of me in your hands that came from my hands. Now that I've talked too much, <laughs> I tend to do that. It's time to end this video and possibly begin another.